Let's have a look at question five in this video. So the teenagers were asked whether they conducted any aggressive acts. Uh, based on that, we want to see the relationship between their aggressiveness and how much TV they watch. So we have here aggressive, whether they performed or not, and how much TV they watched, either less than an hour or at least an hour per day. P1 is going to be the population proportions that the teenagers was watch less than one hour and conduct aggressive acts. And P2 is going to be the proportion that they watch at least one hour and conduct aggressive acts. Now, what's going to be the 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportions? Okay, so what are we looking here first? We're looking for the people who commit uh, aggressions, so this aggressive acts. And we're interested in less than an hour of TV and at least one hour of TV. So we're interested in these cells. What is the proportion of these cells? Well, let's calculate them. In this case, we're having a proportion of 10 aggressive acts who watch less than one hour TV per day out of 88 people in this sample. So 10 out of 88 is going to give us our first proportion. We're going to have over here 10 out of 88 and that's equal to 0.114 if we round up. And the same logic goes over here. Out of this sample of people who watch 609, sorry, out of this sample of people who watch at least one hour TV a day, we have 619 people who watch so much TV and out of them 136 commit aggressive acts. So 136 out of 619 is going to be the proportion of people who commit aggressive acts that watch at least one hour of TV a day. So that's equal to 0 0.22. Now, why do we do so? Because we need it for our confidence interval on the difference between proportions. Because recall, what we're going to calculate between pr uh, proportion, the difference between proportion one of this sample and the difference between the sample proportion two, it's going to be based on sample data. This is just an estimate of the difference of the proportions in reality of the populations. So because we do not have access to that real difference of, uh, of the population, we will find out a range of values that contains the 95% probability that this real difference between population proportions is included there. So it's the same analogy with any other confidence intervals. The only thing that differs is slightly the formula and the standard errors that we are using. So let's do so and we'll see what that confidence interval is. So we're doing the 95% confidence intervals for the proportion differences in the population based on the proportion differences that we found in the sample. So we're going to take P1 hat minus P2 hat. Something that we just saw is this one, 0 0.114 and 0 0.22. We're going to take that difference plus minus a margin of error. So the margin of error is based on the Z critical value because it's a proportion uh, test and the number of observations are high, so we're using the Z critical value. The Z critical value at the 95% confidence interval, it means the significance level is going to be 0 0.05 spread on two tails, multiplied with the standard error, and this is going to be the standard error. So the standard error is going to take into account the proportion samples of each groups. We're going to have the proportion sample of the first group times one minus the proportion sample of the first group, divided by the number of observations in that first sample, so we consider this as our first sample, the people who watch at least uh, less than an hour per day. And this, this is going to be considered the second sample, uh, plus the proportion of our second sample times one minus P hat two divided by the number of observations in that second sample. All the data is accessible to us. So we're just going to substitute and do the math. So let's see what the differences are going to be. Over here, we're going to take the difference between 0 0.114 minus 0 0.22. So we got that. Now, plus minus the critical value Z at that significance level is equal to 1.96. So that's going to be 1.96. And over here, it's a matter of substituting these numbers. And by the way, we notice we'll need the complement proportions. What is 1 minus P1? Well, let's see. 1 minus 0 0.114 is equal to 0 0.8. 886. And it's wise to write them like that in, the, in terms of results because when you plug everything in calculators, it's going to be faster to do. And here, 1 minus P2 is going to be 1 minus 0 0.22. So we're going to need 0 0.78 as well. So now with all the numbers in mind, we're going to substitute and see what we get. Let's do so. We're going to take over here the square root of. So we're going to have here the square root of P1 hat. That's equal to, where was it? 0 0.114, 0 0.114 times the remaining, which is 0 0.886 divided by those number of observations in the first sample, which is 88. So that's the total number of observations. Plus the same logic goes for the second one, 0 0.22 
multiplied with the remaining of 0.78 divided by the number of observations in the second group in total, which is 619. Now it's a matter of solving everything. And by the way, the first step to do here is to solve this square root because this is the longest part multiplied with 1.96, add and subtract for this, from this number because this is obviously something we're doing on the calculator. Uh, now, this difference is going to be minus 0 0.106 plus minus 1.96 times that result. And according to me, that result is going to be equal to approximately, if we round up, 0 0.038. And then when we do the math over here, the, the confidence interval that we would get would range between zero, minus 0 0.18 up to minus 0 0.03. That'll be the confidence interval. That's what they say over here as well. I mean, they put it with round brackets, which is actually a mistake. They should be with squared brackets, but I think that's not what they're, you know, th that's not what they're intending. Probably it's just the way they note it. So based on this number, the answer would be true and we are done.